Mm. My mum showed me about, you know what I mean, just getting by without nothing really. And it was not that my mum, whatever, she always had a nice job. She, she worked in care work. So my mum wasn't the, the richest, but she wasn't she wasn't down and out. I didn't really have mm. a hard child. That. But obviously, she taught me about one toy. I was a spoiled child. My brother would probably always say that I was spoiled. But mm. I was never allowed to, let's say, in my time, there was it was a wrestler stage where you get your wrestling ring and your wrestling figures. <laughs> and I would like, like, you know about going to Woolworths and your mum saying, pick one, but there's 50 figures there. And you're like, <laughs> I'm saying, I have to play with another one. And she's like, no, pick one. Mm. And I'm like, yo. But them sort of things there is what taught me and is what's built me who I am today to understand about being grateful in life. Because even now I've got my own children. I've got a 12-year-old daughter that definitely isn't as grateful as me. Definitely yeah. thinks money grows in trees. But the same way, at Christmas time, she still rolls with me to give away stuff to the homeless. Yeah. So it's a different era. She's definitely not in the era where I was and the way I'm thinking. But the same way, she understands about the two different sides. Yeah. You, yeah. you talked earlier about doing um, uh, your idea of like um, masculinity being around doing doing the most without expecting much. What what are your your needs from the people around you? What do you ask for from the people around you? That's just self interested, just for you. For me, for the people around me, to loyalty is a key thing, and loyalty can come in all shapes and sizes. It could be. It could be talking to someone that you don't speak to or you don't normally, you know what I mean, that you no longer have connection to, but the person that's around you still does. Mm. Um, number two is that some people, everyone's from all different walks of life. Some people are actually around you thinking, one day I'm going to benefit from that. And mm. I feel like if you have that mindset, you will never benefit. Mm. But if you have the mindset of just, being you like you see me I have a lot of different sort of crowd I don't really have much friends in the music scene mm. don't know I do all my all my all my workmates that I do music with are my friends because mm. I've done it I've worked with them over years and like I, I won't say that whoever I do business with are not my friends but I feel like I have a lot of friends that ain't got nothing to do with music mm. and I actually get along with them because of the normality of it. Like some are bus drivers, some work for the council, some are school teachers, some are security guards, you know what I mean? Some are pub owners, some are banqueting suite owners. Everyone, all walks of life. And don't get me wrong, some are, some are a, lot, a lot more wealthy than other mates, but it's not about the wealth. Some people mm. will say, tell me your company, I'll tell you who you are. But for me, it's all about the genuine person for me. Mm. And that's what you can tell me you are. Like, some people make that, they the, the, like, they don't step outside the box and look at the, the question that they're being asked. Like, so my mum used to tell me a lot as a kid, tell me your company, I tell you you are. If you chill with people that teeth, you're going to become a teeth. If you chill with people that smoke, you're going to smoke. But the same way is... By the way, you're giving me so much nuggets that's reminding me of my mum and my grandmother. Yeah, these bro. these are the little things he, that I just said, like... Me. Trust me, yeah, these yeah, yeah. things that my mum <laughs> drummed into my brain from young... And that's created me that I can pass on to my children as well. Mm. That probably she will never hear. I don't think my child or my daughter's or my son's teacher will tell them, tell me your company, I'll tell you who you are. Because it's a different era. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's, 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 it's for me to show them a light. It's crazy because don't you think when you, when you get older, you understand when an older is trying to pass down a generational information to you. And you're just like, chill out, man. And you're like, my dad told me. Yeah, or my granddad told me. And you're just like, yo, bro, just chill out, man. I'm just trying to live my life as a young you. But then, mm. when you get older, you start to think, yo. Like, for instance, now, I got in, I got into a lot of trouble for driving without a license. Mm. When I did get into trouble without driving without a license, and I was in a predicament where I had time to think about, or I was in a situation, or I was in a place where I was because of driving, I was thinking, yo, I should just listen to my people. But any time they send a new card, it was like, you got your license yet? What are you doing, man? Why haven't you got a license yet? Why have you got this or why have you got that? You know what I'm saying? Like, 
and it was just it just started to sink in that like, you know what all them times that people was telling me there wasn't actually moaning it was just keeping it real they know better you know sometimes mm-hmm. as a you as a mad age between 16 and 20 you, know, you just think you're the man <laughs> like, okay. no one can tell you anything you, you think you yeah, I'm a man I've left school no one can chat to me whatever the, the mindset is but the realness of it is, is everything starts to resonate and starts to sink in when shit goes bad. You start thinking about what your mum said or what your dad said mm. or what your brother said or what your uncle said. You know, mm. shit. But it's mad. You should always deep them things before actually making a movement sometimes. And that's why it's always mm. about, my mum taught me as well about, you know what I mean, thinking before you make a move. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying your actions speak louder than words. Like stop talking and talking it and saying you're gonna do that. Action speak, you know what I'm saying? And I live by that can today, you, man. Can you tell me what your like your earliest memory is? Just of, of anything, anything that actually happened in your real life that you remember? And what age were you? My earliest memory I could say for an achievement, I'll go for an achievement base. Hmm. Was me, I used to play football. And I remember on presentation day, there's so much competition. There's American shootout, penalty shootout, best team, best player. And I remember winning nearly every trophy. Mm. And I remember times where I wanted to give up football. Uh, I just remember times where the football manager came to pick me up. Mm. And I like I'd go out with my friends and just not air, air out his calls like yo, I'm out on the motorbikes. What age group is this? Age, uh, group? age group, I'd say about 14, 15. Mm. Even probably younger than that, 12 mm. going up between that age, where it's very easy to get caught up in whatever else is going on in the roads. And if you mates, it's crazy at that time because you have a lot of mates that are doing a lot of different things. Mm. I had a mate that got kicked out of school from such an early age always used to try and not see me on the way to school. Mm. Mum used to be like, yo, you don't want to be like him, you know. This guy mm. don't go to school. Look, he's out in the morning when they were all going to school. Trying to say, ask you what you're doing. When he knows what you're doing, you're going to school. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's not yeah. until I was older and I thought, yo, it's mad, bro. That geezer was raw. It's a lost soul. Like, how was he mm. walking to school with us and leaving us at the gates? He was the same age as us. But you get me? And his mum got fines and all this madness. But it kind of just made me, when I, when I when I got to a certain stage of my life, I just knew, like, shit, you know what? My mum being so strict at me for even school. I couldn't have a day off either. You mad. Mm. You, I would have to be probably be dead. <laughs> Blood. You get me? I think I could say I got a headache or a runny nose. I can't go to school. And it's crazy because I've got a daughter which is tired that gets into these predicaments with her mum. Oh, I can't go today, belly ache. Oh, mm. I'm lactose tolerant. I've had milk. I can't go. And I'm like, huh? What do you mean? Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, I haven't been able to get my hair done into braids, so I can't go. Huh? I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> well, like, this is not an option. And I've had to go and pick her up and actually bring her there physically. But it's mad because... But I couldn't do these things. Mm. It's mad, like, but it's it's crazy for me. That everything my mom taught me, and even the the relationship that I had with my dad wasn't the best. But it's the things that he taught me, I still live on in my blood today, and I still let it lead. I, I still let it play onto my kids. I don't think it's good being born in a certain area and having it. So, like, my parents wasn't really young. I don't know about yourself. My parents, I've got old mm. school parents. I had old school. Mm. My mum had me when she was 45 or something. So, like... Oh, wow. Okay, cool. You get me? Like, I was... You get me? Or 40. Like, 40 or 45, one of the two. But it was, like, mm. it was crazy because my dad was 10 years older than my mum. So, I always wow. had old school parents that just had old school way of thinking. Like, if I asked my dad for a pair of trainings, he'd try to go as doing get some flashing joints. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, Yo, I you hear hear you. Me? That's what I got brought up in. And it was my brother that was only... My brother is 12 years older than me. So he was still into, like, 
the, the, the snazzy shit. So, he, you know what I mean? The Reebok classics and the feelers and the, you know what I'm mm. saying? The Air Maxes. It was them. It was my, it was my, my bro that managed it. Who, who, who were... How, how do you characterise yourself? Like, because I think whenever something big happens in your life, there's just a shift in just who you are. But like you said, you lost your three major role models in life at, yeah. for a similar time. Who were you before versus after, like the year before that happened? Because you talked about football. and all that. So why am I not talking to Mr. Football Player, um, you know, going into his like final contract, probably going to Saudi Arabia to go make a quarter of a million a week or something. Why am I talking yeah. to that person? Why is it an artist rather than a football player? Um, who did you have to become after there was no more elders left in your family? So, I'll be real with you. I went off the rails a bit. Hmm. So, when the dad and mom first passed in, I felt like there was no one that can tell me what's right, what's wrong. Don't get me wrong, I still had brothers who could tell me, but they're not my parents. So, I went for a stage of that's it now. I'm a man. What age group is this, sorry, by the way? Wait, I was 19 years of age. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. I was now a dad. Mm. My son was born, I mean, my daughter was born in February. Dad died around July. Mom died in November. Wow. So I was now a parent. Uh, and then I think the year after that, January, the house got repossessed, bro. I'm a man wow. that's never moved house. I've never moved house, bro. I was born and bred in that yard until I was mm. fucking 20 odd. Never moved, ever. So to lose that house which I grew up in, really, it kind of hit me for six a bit, where I kind of went mm. on a, no one can tell me nothing now. Mm. Whoever thinks they can, just like, you definitely can't because I just felt like I was, I was my own man now. And whoever could tell me and whoever give me the advice, which they did in my life, they can't no more. <laughs> and I, it kind of sent me down the wrong path where going back to the driving, when I was driving and doing mad things, no one couldn't tell me nothing. I'd be like, yo, mm. just chill out, bro. This is my... Because, mm. bro, to keep it real to you, my, ha my, my house was my car. Mm. So with no car, I had no crib, bro. My wardrobe was in my boot. Um, my whole identification for my life was in my car. Mm. So when I got into trouble for driving, I lost everything. I lost my clothes. I lost my, my crib on wheels. I lost my identification. And then I had to start again. And I remember Damn. coming out of um, incarceration, I had to go into a hostel, mm. which was the maddest decision I made in my life. Remember, as I what said, I've never, about it? I've never lived in my on myself. As I said, like, mum mm. was in a hostel living, like. But I remember that decision there is what made me who I am today. Mm. And that's what's crazy, like. The, that same hostel is where I got noticed for rapping. Wow. Uh, I was rapping one day and another guy that lived in the hostel was like, bro, you cold? I've got a guy, you know, that I go, that I used to go college with that works at P110. You should do a freestyle. I was like, ah, I remember these days I was about 21, 22. Mm -hmm. I was like, bro, nah, man, I'm too old to be rapping, bro. I've got a daughter. I need to get a job. Mm -hmm. And he's like, nah, bro, just try do a freestyle, do a freestyle. And I did, man. And what that did, it just, it like, just started building a fan base and people started relating to my pain, bro. Mm -hmm. And I thought, yo, and you know what's crazy? If you've never done something like that before, it's crazy. It's to get the feedback, like, yo, blood, man, I really taking in my thing. People mm -hmm. thought I went prison. Like, I did a few crime mm -hmm. things before that, mm -hmm. which was just on some random channels. But everyone thought that I went to prison from then till now. And I was like, yo, where's he been? Look, he's put weight on and everything. But it weren't that. It was just, man was just going through life things. You get me? Man's lost my mum, my dad. I've had a youth. 
You know what I mean? And then just trying to survive on the roads and doing normal things. Have you ever sat down with someone? Is that is that in your value system to go see a, like a therapist and just discuss that stuff out loud and just say the things that you well, said to people? A lot of people, a lot of people have been um, like like this offering me to uh, like to go and do it, but I feel for me uh, writing and rapping mm. is a is a is a a way of counselling for me. It's even mm. speaking about the stuff that I've never even spoke about before. Mm. It kind of like, that's what helps me. Mm. Or when I've dropped something so deep, deep, and someone says, yo, I relate to that. Mm. When they're like, yo, man, relate to, you get me? Um, man, feel it. I lost my parents to here, and then I went to here. Even people that you know what raw out to me a lot. People that have been into like, uh, you know, the mental institutes. Yeah, and they were like, "Yo, your music got me through, man." That would really mm. it gives me something. This gives me a a, a reason to carry on. Mm. Like, yo, this keys as raw said that that is me. That's made him get through. The uh, the mental side of things, and I brought him back, or he was going through. Say anything, you know what I mean? The people that got this, mm. everyone goes through something, and I feel like me being able to relate to them is a, is, is is part of my counselling. That's dope. Well, I, do I you, believe. Do you see, do, do you see mist and I don't want to say your government name necessarily, but do do you see mist and the person? Um, in your private life as the same person? Is it one whole existence or do you separate when you're missed the artist versus, you know, you as a dad or you as a brother or uncle? Um, You know, it is. I feel like... I feel like... Missed has to play his own character. Hmm. When you leave the house, when I leave my little estate and I go out and I have to, I have to take pictures with people. Mm. People ask, I can't be rude. I'll be like, yeah, go on. You can have a picture. Mm. Reese is the dad. The dad mm. of two will be a dad of three. Mm -hmm. A dad of a 12 year old who doesn't think so I'm quite old. My 12 year old, like, Dad, why do you have to be 30? You know about that one? You know about your child saying, Why do you have to be 30? And I said, Oh, shit, 30. I'm like, oh, Chill out, blood. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Young dad. Um, that's Reese. Um, Christmas time, what else is Reese? Is my whole family come to my yard at Christmas? Mm. I'm talking at least 30 to 40 people. <laughs> that's sick. But for me, for me, that's um, it's a it's a way of uh, what can I say? A way of me growing up, man, mm. and being able to even facilitate all of that. I used to be the guy that they always used to be talking about, like ah, Reese, man, like you know what I mean? He's I don't know, he's in, he's in trouble again or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But. I'm now not that guy. I'm now a guy where if you meet someone, you know how it gets in it. You know when your auntie meets another auntie. Yeah, man, me nephew, I do good, and <laughs> yeah, you yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, he watch the video. He's traveling, and you know what I'm saying? Mm. But I feel like it's good to even to be there. Yeah. How, how does it feel now to be a head of your family in some way? That's a real shift from being the younger brother in a house to being a head of the family. It's crazy, you know. I feel like it feels like I've accomplished something that I've been waiting for for a long time. Mm. Like, let's keep it real. Like, And you know what's mad as well? Um... 
Rapping was a cool blood when I first started, bro. <laughs> yeah. As far as I can remember, it wasn't... It's not a dream job. Your parents just say, mm. yeah, man, keep doing it. We know it's crazy, <laughs> though. Mm-hmm. What's mad is my dad... My dad was a musician. He had his own band, played guitar. Oh, sick. Yeah, his band was called J-A-L-N Band. In his <laughs> age, he was in the top of the pops. He did his thing. You get me? He got a couple of number ones in his stage. And it's mad Sick. because man's living on that legacy. His group <laughs> was with all my uncles. I think there was another three of my uncles in there. So, wow. man, it's in the blood. Mm. So, it's good for me to be here. And my dad's side to be like, yo, Reese is living on that legacy, man. Or when they see me on TV doing a performance where, you know, when they accidentally stumble. That's what's different. You know, they accidentally yeah. stumble on your success where they drive through a um, a road and they see you on a billboard or they're, on the, they're driving in the car and they hear you on the radio. Or the radio man's like, yo, mister's got this coming up and... Mm. It, that's when I think the penny drops and people yeah. start to understand that shit, this user's really doing this music thing, like, mm. or to see me do a, a show with that many people, they're like, rah, or post it, because I still have them on social media and that. I think that's when they really understand that, yo, mine was living on the right. legacy. Yeah, yeah. What, what's the what's the difference in terms of raising a daughter? Like, I, I, you, the way you were raised and you talked about your grandfather, how much of that is actually transferable into her? Because my daughter, when I tried to do the hardline thing with her, she just gave me emotion. And I realised I couldn't push her beyond a point. It didn't work in the same way like for my son. This is what's different, you yeah, as well. I feel like I went through a mad stage where I didn't know how to deal with my daughter. Mm. You know, it gets woman things start happening and new new brain i don't know what happens but you're not that cool <laughs> that that you was at a stage mm-hmm. so for me i just had to be a dad when it was time to be a dad mm. i went through a mad stage my daughter was even blocking me at a stage wow like mm. whatever me and the disagreements her mom had she just put it back onto me like yeah mom said this so i'm blocking you i'll be like yo you can't be doing that, like, just because mm. your mum's moving to me in a certain way, you can't be acting like this. You get me? Yeah, yeah. So, um, obviously, that was a mad scale, but I remember going to my uncle, like, unks, I'm done, bro. Like, I don't know what to do. My baby girl has blocked me. It's been this long. I've tried to go to the yard. She said she ain't coming downstairs. Bad things, but... <laughs> but it affected me and he goes mm. you know the only thing you can do he says don't stress her just be a dad when it's time to be a dad mm. so then obviously it was the hardest thing I had to do I had to kind of let it breathe because you know what's mad I think she liked me messaging her every day unblock me or getting someone to message her get her to unblock me I'm not having this she liked that sort mm. of and it weren't until she had a, a bicker with her mum and when she needed dad and dad come in had to be super dad dad come and get me <laughs> like, oh, 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 oh. Like, yo I was gonna say dipped out the yard yo get me even my partner at the time was like I don't think you should be you know what I mean she's got you wrapped around her little finger but I'm trying to let her know like yo you're not understanding like this is my mm. daughter that I've, like she's been like you know what's crazy it was my daughter that kept me sane Mm. through all the hard times mm. it was my daughter that kept me pushing I couldn't let go bro mm. like I've always had the relationship where I had to have my daughter house or no house grip you you mm. and at a stage but mum was got, mum was depressed bro as I said you know what I went through I lost my mum and dad within three months then lost the yard about six months later and I had a baby mum that would still say, come on, grab you, and I'd leave thinking, yo, where am I going? I can't sleep in the whip. I'd have to go to a family members or whatever it was. But it was my daughter that kept me sane and kept me pushing, bro. Mm. And that kept me knowing that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and that no matter what, 
my daughter's always going to need me and need things. Mm. So there's no time to lounge around and worry about, or even try and mess with your freedom. It's easy mm. to be messing with your freedom. And then the worst time about it was when I had a little time away from my daughter. It wasn't much, about seven and a half months. But when I came out, I seen how much she grew and how much time I missed. But you know what it was? It was a blessing and a curse. You know how some people say it makes or break it? It made me. Mm. Prison for me made me enjoy my own company. Before that, I didn't enjoy my own company. Mm. But I was That's always with my brethren. My brethren mm. would wake me up and my, I'd probably, my brethren would stay at my yard and we'd wake up together. Yeah, man, what are we on today? That was the <laughs> life. I'm on whatever mm. my brethren's on. My brethren's on my iron. Going to prison made me enjoy my own company. It made me start understanding what I like. I started tidying the cell, standing mm. up my shower towels and my books there and my noodles there. But what that does, it creates stability. I didn't know at the time what I was creating, mm. but I was creating my, st my stability. Because you got to remember, I was a mommy's boy, but I didn't iron, I didn't wash, mm. I didn't cook. You know what I'm mm. trying to say? I didn't hoover. There was no house chores going on, bro. Mm. So... I feel like that's what built me, bro. That built Mist. Mm. You know what I mean? And then, obviously, doing the music, which was a big decision. I remember, yeah, after my first video, I went and grabbed my daughter, yeah. And uh, my video that was out was with Shadow. So the mother of my first child knows Shadow. Mm. When we're grabbing my daughter, She's like, ah, oh, CD music now. You and Shadow doing that rap thing. <laughs> Here's your daughter. I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> I remember looking at my you. Sorry, I that remember, was so cold. Yeah, I remember contemplating like, bro, I told my brethren, but I'm too old for this shit. Mm. I got my BM fucking kind of laughing off my thing. You know what I'm going to say? Like, ah, oh, mm. yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, oh, I see you doing that video. Ha, ah, I see it. Ah, I see Shadow as well in the background. Ha, ah. you know, like it wasn't a hype. <laughs> Fast forward a year, mm. I now had her siblings asking me for tickets for festivals mm. and shows, yeah. and then everything. You know, for me, I always remember everything. It kicked back like oh. I was like, bloody imagine this. I got her <laughs> sister and her aunt. Begging me for tickets. Mm. And a year ago, there was laughing. <laughs> you gotta mm. understand, there was really laughing. Like, ah, you doing music, are you? Ah, <laughs> yeah, see? And for that, for me, this kind of made me realize, like, whatever you manifest into that head, mm. whatever you visualize, it's bound to happen. Mm. You just gotta keep that manifestation as strong very strong and like no matter what you're going through you just gotta you just gotta turn a negative to a positive mm. this is my main thing that I did any negative I just had to make a positive out of it I lose mm. one of my cars I'd be like ah well you know what could have crashed in that later and died if this happens to take that well you know what bro that could have happened or, you know what I'm saying I always mm. try and get a positive from any negative and I try and so, take a lesson from it. You you spoke earlier about um, like the the weight of being a man, and I'm I'm quite similar. So like, uh, one of the things that we try to do through this movement yeah, is that we all know what we have to do as men. Everyone yeah. here is delivering all of those things and more. But at the same time, it's just like, can I balance that out a little bit? And like, is there something in your life that you you fear, avoid? that carries a slightly heavy burden than the rest of the things that just sits at the top? Yeah. I would say. But with growth, it's changed. Mm. I feel like younger me, I was so scared to embrace my relationship publicly. Mm. And that's because, not because I'm trying to hide anything in the blood. It's felt like I hate people's opinion when it comes to your relationship, especially in the mm. social media world these days. You know mm. what I'm saying? I felt like. Say that again. Let me turn on my. 
right there. Let me turn on my Wi-Fi. I don't think my Wi-Fi is on one sec. One second. Yeah, it's on now. Is that better? Connection-wise? Yeah, it's all good. I, I think it records locally anyway, so it uploads it from your end, which will look better than probably what you're seeing on... on oh, okay, TV okay. Phone. So, yeah, man. I went through um, a stage in my life mm. where I didn't really want to embrace... I didn't mix fatherhood and my love life with my lifestyle because mm. I felt like... Mm. It was two different things. I felt like if you're a rapper, you have to portray a certain image and a certain mm. way of living. With growth and who who I'm sculpting, who I want people to see me as, but I want them to know I'm a mash dad. Mm. I want them to know I'm a gentleman. Even though without posting what I do every day with my, my, my children and my thing, I still want them to know that, you know, this geezer, he lives a family life every day. Mm. He's got a bird. He's got nippers. And you know what I mean? I try and juggle the both. Mm. At a stage of my life, I weren't down to juggle both. To keep mm. it so separate. But I feel like the eyes that I'm trying to scope for the end goal, this is all about to the end goal, who I want Mr. to be known as. He has to be known as a good father and a man that did mm. his thing when it comes to being a dad. That there for me, going back to alpha male, is a man, a good father, is an alpha male. It doesn't matter how strong you are. It doesn't matter mm. how much dough you send. But does do you put that time in that needs to be put in to your children so in the later life they can say, you know what, my dad done this and done this, which I am here today. Mm. That's what my definition of alpha male is, is you being able to carry on a generation of thinking not about money and yeah of course it's money we would all love to make sure our great grandkids grandkids great 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 will never have mm. to work a day in their life but the same way i want to leave a legacy of presence is key mm. and i feel like without being present it doesn't matter, bro. It doesn't matter how much dough you got and how much holidays, how much toys you buy. It's all about the presence. Mm. You know what I mean? For me, now I've got one of each. I have a child. I have a son. He's just over one. Mm. And I see how much he needs his dad. Mm -hmm. And not to, and beforehand, I'd seen the same with my daughter. I know how much and when they need the dad. I've even, I've grown to know that when it's dad's mm. time to come in. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And it's crazy because I'm a strict dad. But in the other the other light, I'm just like a little walkover dad the same way. Mm. And that's all because of back down to my parents. So like the things that I won't allow my children to do is what I wasn't allowed to do as a kid. Mm. But I still, I've got my own way of parenting, so I'm not so too much, I'm not too much hard on bedtime. Mm. So, I would say when my daughter comes to my house, she knows, yo, I ain't got no bedtime, I'm at my dad's. <laughs> uh, I'm not too lean, I'm on a, I'm a sweet man, I will sit down with the youths and smash sweets in as well, like, this is my thing, like, yo, <laughs> you're at dad's, like, let's watch a movie, let's eat some sweets. Mm. Um... I've got her into like an outdoor curriculum, like as well as quadding, motorbiking, mm. would be sort of things. I like her to come and think. I only can do that with my dad. Mm. That outgoing kind of thing. Um, but again, man, yeah, man, just like that's all good. I am. Um, I have one last question for you. Mm -hmm. Do you consider yourself spiritual? In any way, shape, or form? 100%. I think without spirituality, I wouldn't be here today. Mm. You have to find a need. You have to find faith. Mm. And I'm not here trying to um, entice anyone to join in a religion or whatever, but I feel like spirit, to be spiritual, you just need to connect 
to whatever you feel comfortable connecting. It could be your higher power, could be someone who passed away. Mm-hmm. Could be your parents, could be your grandparents, could be God. Whatever mm-hmm. it is, it could be... There's religions, you know what I mean? There's so much religions that, that, that pray to different things and different people and different ways, knees, temples. Mm. You know what I mean? Some people do it in the bedroom. But I feel like spirituality is the key to keeping sane. Sometimes there's there's no answers to why mm. certain things are happening to you in life. And the only answer I could say is to pray. Mm. and you can pray in any way you can pray to whoever you want but I just feel like being able to take time away for yourself to even if you speak to yourself even if you try and speak to the outer body or whatever it is third person or just tell yourself things giving yourself time to to open your eyes to spirituality is a key thing Mm. Because even down to nature, mm. things that we see every day that we take as granted is very spiritual. You know what I mean? As much as even there's a new thing that I've been doing, grounding, where you just go out barefoot, mm-hmm. cranking on the grass. But bro, I'm telling you, that helps. I don't care what anyone says. Mm. Grounding, hopping out on the grass and grounding your feet, for me, was a key thing. And taking in the wind and walking, like, bro, mm. you think I'd walk anywhere? Just rewind five years, but I ain't walking nowhere. <laughs> I ain't walking. Like, yo, mm. get me in the car. and I'm going to shop in the mm. car. Walking for me in the morning is help me. Mm. It gives me time to think about things that I couldn't think about before. So much stuff. But I just feel like, yeah, man. That is a big part of spirituality, just walking. Even if it's not sitting down and praying, just walk and be free. Go stand in the middle of the field and take deep breaths for mm. 30 seconds. All of that is key. You know what I mean? And think positive. Thinking positive and saying positive things, it's all spiritual. Mm. You know what I mean? you got to put things out into atmosphere to get it back. Powerful. Mm. Miss, thank you so much. That was uh, an incredible um, conversation that we had and I really, really appreciate you taking the time out. But there's loads of things that reignited memories, even in myself, about how I was raised and just things that were said to me. And like I made the go-karts. We used to, you know, any abandoned buggies that we'd find by the Serious, day, it? Off and yeah. make a, a go-kart of it. So I remember all those things. So it's really dope to connect with you on that, man. Is there anywhere, uh, what's next for you creatively? What, what are people should be looking out for? Where can they find it? Sorry, I think his phone might have died. Is it? To be honest, I think I think we've got it, so it's all good. Just just tell him that I said uh, we very much appreciate, and just to you, the team, and him. No, 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 it's fine. We, we had wrapped anyway. It was just me talking to him as a, as a person, so it's all good. But just let, just let him know in yourself that if you need anything from us in terms of shouting about any of the work he's done, we'll, we'll support it. So just email it over. And if anything else we need, please let us know.